life very, very easy because I'm not going to introduce um, these two wonderful people by who they are in the sense of they're amazing. We know that. But I have two things I want to tell about them. So I have Ines here. It's a field of uh, philosophy of education. Very, not uh, something I am aware of. So I want to learn from Ines a lot. And then we have Suzanne, which is digital tools as part of education, which is another thing I'm, mm, yes. I don't know much about. Uh, well, I know you know. The, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So we are, we are here to learn. Uh, that was another thing I think uh, um, Thorsten was mentioning. I have one question, which will bring us closer. Why you choose or who made you to choose this field of philosophy of education? What was the inspiration? And maybe, you know, I need to change the field. Um, thank you for this question. <laughs> but um, as an author of this book here, <laughs> I just wanted to say something before this. Because um, it was very much a pleasure to work with Thorsten Philipp and also with Tobias Schmuel. And I wanted to say thank you <laughs> for this very professional process. And uh, this should be acknowledged before we start to talk, because... <laughs> I guess it was really a lot of work. <laughs> so, okay. Um, difficult question, because I'm wondering when I started to think of the philosophy of education, it seems like forever. <laughs> but I must say, yes, um, when I, um, I was a student here in Berlin, in, at the Free University of Berlin, and uh, studying psychology, mm. and I got interested into the scientific, scientification of work. Mm. So it was not education at the first place, but the changes that occur uh, everywhere, because computers were introduced and because data was processed everywhere, mm -hmm. because people had to start to think of a, of a scientific way how to deal with information. And this is how I got involved and I did my first study on programmers, um, which was also in Berlin at the, in the year 2000, so many, many years ago, <laughs> um, that I did research and I interviewed programmers and I wanted to find out how they uh, managed to uh, deal with the responsibilities. Mm. So the responsibility, where's <laughs> here? <laughs> it's about responsibility, yes. How do they acknowledge that they are responsible for very difficult, complex processes. And this is also how it brought me back into issues of education, of learning, and now I'm a professor of the learning sciences at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Many thanks, and I mean, 13 years of experience, and, and it is not just years. <laughs> From 2000, and then uh, that was, yeah. That's me, 30 <laughs> years, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm mixing, I'm mixing you both, but yeah. I turn to, to you because uh, Ines was mentioning about, she was, she's looking at how education is changing, yes. right? And I think, and how she also mentioned computers. And I think there's another revolution coming into the education. Could you bring me into the inspiration as well, why you are in that field where you are? Yes, actually, I uh, was born as a, an architect at Politecnico di Milano in Italy. But I wasn't uh, um, uh, so interested in building, but uh, in the dynamics of the project. I, I actually uh, felt in love with the idea of the project. Uh, in uh, the both dimensions, the, the, the fact that the project is uh, uh, your ability uh, to imagine a reality that's better than the reality in, uh, in which you are. And also a project is the way you have to pay for coming at that imaging that you have designed for your future. And I started working with the education of architects 
and, uh, and uh, then I stayed in uh, the, the field uh, of education uh, with all uh, the innovations uh, that we had uh, in uh, these 30 years, <laughs> because I started in the 90s, in the early 90s. Um, and actually, I, I think uh, that uh, working uh, with the digital in education is very interesting because uh, um, since we have the opportunity in uh, our era to uh, take advantage from informatics and all digital technologies. Why not to try to take the best for our students and our teachers? So this is the perspective. We don't have to use digital in education because it's fancy, because it's modern, but we have to use it if it can give us something useful, something interesting, something stimulating. And in a transdisciplinary perspective, this is exactly the case, in my opinion. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, we are also going to move to two other parts. One is we will continue to inspire you to bring you, you know, in a metaphoric words, uh, worlds, um, there will be one example, uh, followed from Ines, then Susanna, and then we will go into a more practical part where we'll be bringing experiences like uh, Torsten was mentioning, we are here to share. But let, ma let us first do one sort of little intervention with this first metaphor. And I have to take notes. We have three letters. Give me a second. Ines, we are ready. So I'm going to give you the letter. You go, you go for the, this one. I have this one, okay. and, I have, and this is the intervention. So I think we stay in like this, right? Because you're in the middle. So I'm going to show you a letter. It's a very easy alphabetic letter. So it's A. Uh, what is Susanna bringing? Do you see that? H, like H. Holland. Excellent. Ines, bring us in. Yeah. Um, let me show you something. If someone is uh, familiar with Gestalt psychology, you would know this, right? Do you know what this is? It's ambivalent, right? So, um, you say ambivalent, which indicates that there's a problem, right? We want to show you um, a good example with this, what inter or transdisciplinarity means. Because, because we have an alphabet where we have the letter A and the letter H, which has the shape, as you know, then we get a problem. Because we do not know if this would indicate an A or if it indicates an H. Depending on the context, you would decide, okay, if someone writes the name Adam, for example, you think, oh, someone was a little bit lazy and just did not pay attention to the top of the A. But you would figure out that it's the name Adam very easily. It's the context. Then you don't have a problem. And if you write horse, for example, you would see all the other letters. And if you see this, you would also say, oh, someone maybe did not have a proper uh, desk or something like this. And therefore, a mistake occurred with this writing. It's also the context of the word horse that makes you sure that it's an H. Okay, then you don't have a problem. But in the abstract, like this, you say, hey, what is she showing here? It's ambivalent, right? And this is how I want to make uh, an example of how we enter into problems. We have indicators for something, but we do not see clearly. We do not have the context right. We have to find out. We have to do research. 
So, um, this should inspire you to think also of how maybe problems occur in your context. And then you find out, oh, we have to talk, we have to discuss. How can I decide this? I mean, if you have writing, you say, I have a context, the text, the context, right? <laughs> and then you say, okay, in this context, I will look out for the sense that someone wants to make. But it's especially in research that we are in front of something where the context is unclear. We create the context. We enter into many, many discussions about where's the border or the boundary yeah, between a discipline, for example. So we, our topic is here bridges and walls. And I would like to inspire you to think of not something as an opposite, but as something that occurs just at the same time. If there is a border, if there is a wall between something, it's also probably something that could be a bridge. It's not only in an oppositional sense, these metaphors that we use. It can tend to one or the other side, depending on how you interpret. So what is important, and this is a part of what philosophy of science today discusses, it's how we interpret objects. Objects are not there, not in a positivistic sense, like we have something like a table here or a chair. This is something that the positivist way of thinking acknowledges as something, well, it stands there, yeah? It's put there. That's the Latin origin of the word positivism. It's something that is there. It stands there. It's set there. It's put there, <laughs> yeah? So, if we acknowledge more and more that objects do not exist just as that, but that we create them because we interpret them, then we have a different point of view, and this makes it also possible to create the bridges that we need, because interpretation is something dialogical. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will stop here because, um, you know, I could now go on to I could explain so more about. and more of the philosophy Sorry, of science. Yes, but I am challenging yes. a positivism by using this table as a chair, I suppose. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to interpret this. <laughs> but, but actually, for bringing in, in yes. a, the first time we shared this example, we thought how we are going to translate this message to people of different disciplines. But then, when I was listening more to you, I thought about, and you mentioned context, right? But then, who gave us the power to bring that context? Who yes. gave us the power to say, this is the only way, and this is my view, my lens? And so, that is about when we were discussing our disciplines, I said about this, my inspiration of Tango, right? Knowledge systems. And, I'm, I'm, and sort of, I, I had this feeling of, wow, I got it. I'm always afraid of, of this art of philosophy. So I'm like, am I interpreting right? In a sense, I was questioning. But then actually I thought, that is the reason I work with local communities. In a sense of, I don't know if this plant is edible, but you, 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 who are in certain contexts living there, experiencing that and knowing that plant in and out can tell me directly, don't eat it twice a day, you know, then you will have this or that, or eat it, that will really help you. So I really am grateful for, for giving me and inspiring me, saying, I'm, yeah, it's worth digging further. Thank you, Ines. I, I think it's, it's a wonderful example. Show it to your students. Yes. I think it's, it's super. <laughs> we have another example. So we're not boring you, I hope. Um, there is an example where nature is going to be involved. Mm. Susanna. Bring us in. Yes, we have. Uh, we are so lucky since uh, Torsten uh, had uh, this uh, very nice idea. We, we are in a wonderful building, uh, but uh, also with a wonderful nature uh, here. 
it is not so difficult to imagine to be in a bush, in a bush with a lot of trees and leaves and the rays of the sun coming through the leaves and the, the sounds of birds chirping everywhere. And do you feel like in a bush? I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay. For me, it's easy. Very Suzanne, well. for me, it's easy. I see Very the bushes. Very well. And, but you are not in the bush like uh, anybody, but uh, like uh, Ruth Kephin, the little uh, red riding uh, hood. Mm? So imagine to be uh, like uh, Ruth Kephin. I It's good, the pronunciation? Is good enough? Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Somebody trained me uh, before uh, the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, very well. And uh, uh, Rod Kepin will, uh, will uh, help uh, us in uh, understanding the why of uh, transdisciplinarity. And I have uh, uh, appreciated a lot of Professor Schroeder saying uh, that uh, the why is uh, the very important starting point for our reflection at uh, university. And uh, as uh, we uh, walk uh, around uh, in this uh, bush uh, uh, as uh, Rothkirchen, uh, we are going to find the why of uh, transdisciplinarity. The first one uh, is uh, the, uh, what I can call the complexity of the reality. When uh, this little girl uh, meets uh, the wolf, uh, she has not the luxury uh, to uh, uh, deal with each discipline uh, at a time. So biology, ethology, geometry and physics in order to understand if the wolf is dangerous or not. The reality comes at her all uh, in once. So this is uh, the first why of uh, uh, why we should embrace uh, transdisciplinarity. Because if we want uh, to, com to understand the complexity of reality, it's very, very difficult to do it uh, in a monodisciplinary way. So having a transdisciplinary set uh, uh, could be a transdisciplinary mindset could be very useful uh, for us. And uh, very related uh, to the complexity of reality, reality, the need of an holistic decision making. If I have to take decision in a complex reality, I need for sure a transdisciplinary mindset. Obviously, uh, uh, meeting a talking wolf uh, adds a lot of uh, complexity, uh, we, we know. <laughs> and uh, uh, perhaps uh, we, we, uh, our, our world are not so complex <laughs> as in the history of a brother Grimm's. But uh, um, uh, to be able uh, to take holistic decision, we have uh, seen it uh, particularly with uh, our best week the problem uh, in the last year with the pandemics. It wasn't possible to face the pandemics with uh, decision uh, uh, taken just by a medicine perspective, by an economical perspective, uh, uh, by a communication perspective. We had uh, to uh, try to have a transdisciplinary approach in order to cope with a very difficult situation. The third why, in my opinion, is that innovation is at the intersections. How many times the men in, uh, in the women in their evolution have discovered, uh, ideated new things uh, thanks to the intersection of uh, different fields. And nowadays, uh, with uh, digitalization, artificial intelligence, etc., we are uh, uh, every day in this situation in which we can invent and find a new path thanks to intersection between uh, disciplines. Uh, for example, uh, when we are talking about bioinformatics, uh, 
uh, or telematics uh, or uh, uh, whatever you can find in uh, life science uh, that uh, is crossing uh, robotics, uh, informatics, uh, uh, digital science with uh, the knowledge uh, of medicine and biology. You can experience uh, it. Uh, for sure, the idea of uh, uh, the wolf uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to dress up uh, as a grandmother was uh, in the intersection between uh, surrealism and theatre. I don't know it. I, 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 I'm joking because the metaphor has <laughs> its limitations. But <laughs> I have, I have uh, tried. I have uh, tried uh, it uh, anyway. Um, other, uh, I have uh, two more uh, why for transdisciplinarity. Um, first one is about uh, ethics, ethics considerations. Ethics consideration are very difficult to take just from one perspective. You can't use just the knowledge you can take from a philosophy. You need social science, you need anthropology, perhaps you need also law, etc. in order to take consistent ethical consideration in a specific uh, situation. I, I don't know if uh, Inessa is uh, agree, but, but we, we are uh, going to talk about it. And the last one that is very, very important in our times, I suppose, is uh, avoiding uh, oversimplification. Hmm. Every time uh, we hear somebody saying, uh, oh, but it's very simple, we have just to do this. <laughs> Um, often uh, is a, a, a false uh, answer uh, because uh, the reality, you can't find simple answers to big problems. You need a complex uh, and uh, inter, uh, intersecting, uh, complex answers intersecting several sectors. And uh, I don't know if I can say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, if in, <laughs> in, um, in Europe nowadays, we need, we really need a uh, transdisciplinary mindset. Uh, because if you have a transdisciplinary mindset, you can't be ultra conservative. You can't be a uh, fascist or nazist. Hmm? Because you can understand the complexity of reality. Uh, you haven't simple answers, as usually the extreme answers uh, are. So we have uh, gathered, uh, thanks uh, to uh, Rokatchen, Roca Roca uh, <laughs> some uh, why for uh, transdisciplinary, and for sure we can apply it not just in uh, the bush, but uh, also in, uh, in, uh, in our uh, wonderful uh, Berlin or uh, in, our, uh, in our countries, because uh, as a Brother Grimm's uh, said, uh, the bush is just, uh, is not nature, is just uh, the, the mirror of our complex uh, lives, mm -hmm. of our complex worlds. Yeah.